I'd like to introduce our, our third speaker tonight, uh, who is Ho Jun Song from Korea. And uh, Ho Jun was uh, a big inspiration for having this event tonight. Um, I, I knew of his work because of Arts Capital's particular interest in space over the year and his open source satellite initiative. But um, since I knew that Ho Jun was going to be in London, uh, I, I was also looking at some of his other artworks and uh, realized he's a really <coughs> very interesting artist who's doing some extraordinary stuff. So um, I'm really glad that he could join us today. Over to you. Hello, uh, my name is Ho Jun and I come from South Korea. And thank you for inviting me at the Art Catalyst and going to talk briefly about how to launch a satellite as an individual. But uh, in order to understand why I'm why I did that, uh, let me just introduce a couple of my other works to you. Uh, one thing that I built in 2006 was called the strongest weapon in the world. At that time, we had a North Korea, South Korea, like a nuclear experiment, you know, argument thing was going on, and I thought it was just. Uh, and then, like, uh, there was the U.S., you know, Russia, China, all got involved together. That, that hey, North Korea should not have nuclear weapon. But still, they do have, you know, the Russians and U.S. and other countries have nuclear weapons, right? And then, it, there was a time that, like, uh, they were trying to reduce the number of the nuclear weapons uh, to a certain amount of, like, numbers. And then, Russia suddenly built a bomb just out of TNT, not nuclear uh, warhead. And then they called it uh, the mother of bomb, which is, like, a, you know, dozens of times stronger than uh, the TNT bomb. And then U.S. suddenly make a bomb, made a bomb called the father of bomb, which is stronger than the mother. And then, okay, I think it's time for me to end this, you know, vicious circle. So I want to create the strongest weapon in the world. So the basic concept of this is actually, you know, this isn't like a weapons of mass destruction, but this is like weapons of mass happiness. So what it does, I mean, it's just indestructible, but spots out like beautiful messages every time you have like a nuclear explosion around this. So this is like a conceptual, semi-conceptual work because it, it will be destroyed. I mean, if there's a nuclear explosion right next to it, but um, still working on uh, this in terms of like theories and a lot of like issues, like how, how can we protect anything from uh, nuclear explosions that's right next to it and how can we communicate and when there's a nuclear like radiations going on like that so this was first prototype and the second thing that I worked with the uh, students of the design school in Korea was this was also part of the strongest weapon in the world and I think the strongest weapon in the world is it's about how to archive whatever you have uh, for a long time because these days we have like you put all the information into Google server and if we have like one electromagnetic pulse bomb then we will lose like 10 years of our histories right so let's just put everything what we have and then carve it into the cow bone so that at least we can preserve what we have like for let's say you know thousand or ten thousand years so maybe you can see like creative commons over there uh, there's some GPS coordinates down there, have, uh, it's their own languages. And the other thing that I also, the third uh, strongest weapon in the world is called I Love You version. And it says, pick up the, I mean, wear a helmet, pick up the uh, hammer and uh, hit the work as hard as you can. So this is about like 200 kilograms. And it has some electronics inside. And that hammer is a real uh, construction hammer. And you gotta hit harder. <laughs> So, you know, we can say that it's the strongest weapon in the world, right? So, and then another thing that I created was called radiation jewelry. And 
and it's about uh, it, it is a jewelry that uh, for the people who wants to commit suicide because you know uh, uh, it's it's about like tasting the death as if you're tasting the wine because when you taste the wine and if you don't like the wine you know you choose another one it's like the same thing if you taste the death and if this is too bitter then you probably want to leave again and then so I really wanted to have the real radioactive materials at that time like I don't know it was like 2000 but it was definitely before the Japanese earthquake uh, 2000 I don't know 9 or 10 and then I look up through the internet and then I found uh, uranium out of amazon.com so I ordered it into my studio, and then even like it comes with uh, UPS, and then it says uranium as a good description, but I had no problem getting it into my studio. <laughs> because it's just a uranium ore, like the experimental uranium, or like it's not a condensed uranium. So I, I made a jewelry out of this, and then I think it would be nicer if we can have like a cutter that symbolizes the life. And that, this one is a uh, uranium ore and some uranium uh, bead, but it's a uh, one millimeter stainless wire. So once you put it on, there's no way you can take it out uh, unless you use that uh, cutter. And I even tried to upload it to the eBay, tried to sell it with this price, and I. Uh, <laughs> yes, like there's some uh, advertisement going on, and in the end, there's, it says there's no return. And then I had a reply uh, that why it's so expensive, and I reply, commented back that that's the price of your life. <laughs> no one bought, bought it, and you know I really want you know someone to buy this so that I can you know be rich, and then they can you know finally have their own you know peace, but. <laughs> you know, when it comes to this, I think that money is also important too. So, I mean, before I create uh, these two works of mine, like uh, the radiation jewelry and the strongest weapon in the world, I was like uh, making a lot of like media art related things, like a lot of uh, sensors and. Uh, you know, when you do something, something other thing happens. But then I really want to uh, make some narratives out of like technologies. That's why, why you know, I uh, build like radiation jewelries and the strongest weapon world uh, series. And then I figured that by launching a satellite as an individual, I think I can also make a lot of stories. I was in a satellite company in 2006. But then at that time, I never had a thought that I, you know, would launch a satellite as an individual because it, I feel like, I felt like it's just, you know, trying to showing off to the people, hey, I just launched a satellite. <laughs> so, but then I met a lot of artists and then we started to talk. Then I, we uh, also figured that there's a lot, lots of issues in this, you know, project that we can talk about. Like a lot of things going on, like as if you can see from the slide. Amateur versus professional, useless versus useful, individual versus institution, and art versus technologies like that. So I really wanted to figure out how it is possible to launch a satellite as an individual. Definitely, we need a satellite, we need a rocket. I think you know we probably need to have some permissions from like government or like international institutions. <laughs> And at that time, I thought I needed strategies, like, you know, and as an individual, it might not be possible to launch a satellite. So, first thing was, I've been trying to look up the, you know, internet, and then I found this really good uh, reference. It's the Cal, Cal, Cal Poly Tech and Stanford University's initiative since 2003. It's about launching a satellite. Uh, as, a, as a graduate uh, student's program, uh, launch and build, build, launch and operate a uh, uh, satellite for themselves. So, so far 50 like cubes are already in the space. So I think, you know, if I use that standard, I think maybe I can launch a satellite. And so I've uh, been participating 
this real satellite come from for four years since 2009. And as you can see, I've showed one of my poster over there <laughs> while you see all the other technical poster right next to me. <laughs> And this one too, I've even like tried to, you know, show some t-shirts over there as well. But, you know, it's, you know, they, they were kindly enough to, you know, re receive me over there. And then I've taken a picture of the people walking around with the satellite, this small satellite. So, so but then my uh, biggest hurdle was getting a rocket. Oh, before I move on, I really, uh, no, later. Uh, so the rocket. So you just, I think you know, it's I think it's funny, but if you don't know where to ask, you just send an email to the you know company who has a rocket, and then they just give you an reply. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're an individual or not. And I even got like uh, spam mails from some you know companies I don't know. <laughs> So it's a good thing, so just do it, it's like, you know. And then, so, uh, thing is, I cannot uh, rent a whole rocket, and I cannot build a rocket, so I need a, a rental rocket, but I cannot rent a whole rocket, it, it'll be too expensive. So there's a way of uh, 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 going to the space, as attaching, uh, uh, attaching to the you know, bigger satellite, or the bigger rocket. So. There will be a one big satellite who will pay most of the launching cost and I'll be like attached to right next to that big satellite. It's called piggyback, right? Now I didn't invent that. Those cubes that people and the other satellite as well, amateur satellite. So this is basically what uh, the the adapter looks like and I just call this space uterus because I feel like I'm giving a birth. And uh, this is me, I went to Russia, Samara Space Center, and as you can see, this is, uh, these are all like real, you know, people from Russia. People in Russia, <laughs> they are not actors or the actresses. So this is really like senior engineers, you see right here, and the French guy who is doing, I mean, uh, providing the adapter. This is the adapter, and he's trying to catch my satellite dummy. As if you know you're in a hospital. No. <laughs> my baby. Boy. So it's not going too far because it's on Earth, but it's real. I mean, that uh, adapter is really going to space. That sub satellite is dummy satellite, so this that is not my satellite but it gives you an understanding of how this adapter is working in space. Because you cannot just put your satellite into the rocket, you need an adapter. So the, uh, this is the detail of the launch vehicle that I'm going. I'm going with the Soyuz. You know, all, you, know you all know about the Soyuz rocket, right? It's like the Russian governmental rocket. That put like Sputnik to the space, you know, the, all those like space I mean, astronauts to the space, but it was supposed to be mine was supposed to be launched on the thirty uh, first uh, May, but it got delayed to next year April. A lot of people think this is a fake project because I'm an artist, but I do this for real. I paid like uh, uh, three fourths of the launching cost, which is hundred thousand US dollars with all my money. So a lot of people call me great man because I spend a lot of money even though I don't have money. <laughs> so this is really going and then I sure can show all the videos of here. And let's just uh, try to jump in and I mean try to skip through the videos. This is uh, what happened in the real uh, satellite contract in 2011 June at the Paris Air Show in Paris.
we are here today to assist on the signature oh, of the first Nova Nano, a French-based company, launch contract. Within the terms of this contract, Nova Nano will ensure the launch opportunity for the OSSI satellite by, made by Ho Jun Song, a Korean artist. Gentlemen, please. That's the sign first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, at this time I gave out lots of press releases to all the people around uh, uh, the booth. But what happened was, no one showed up. This is like a historical moment. Because, this, you know, if I launch the satellite, I'll be the first individual who launched the satellite it's in the history, right? But no one showed up. And I hired a cameraman. He's the only one who was, who was in front of us. Uh, and my, I made a speech. <laughs> uh, Sputnik went to space in 1957, and even a dog went to space too. I think it is really natural to think by 2011 that uh, as an individual we start our own space program. And uh, this will be the first individual satellite made. And uh, I'm really happy that I work with the Novenero to realize this thing happened. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I mean, so these are all happened for real, but it looks so fake, right? And it will also look really, you know, like amateur. I think that's the tone that I have for my project. I look, you know, really amateur, no matter how much I try. So I think it's good. So next thing is building a satellite. This thing, this satellite that you see right now is the first prototype that I built. So I just brought it. <laughs> Sorry. It's in the Primac uh, bag. <laughs> I just bought some power. So as you can see, this is the real satellite size. It's, this is the real size. So I'll just pass to the audience so you can take a look at and then I uh, okay so a lot of even there are some uh, uh, stores that sells like kits cubesetkits.com and I tried to use illustrator but I found it so hard I use a lot of like local shops to build the machines but I ended up using a cracked version of SolidWorks <laughs> and I tried to get a quote from them, but it's almost as expensive as you launching a satellite. So I decided to you know, get a correct one, and I asked, asked them, can I use this for open source purpose? They said, okay, you, can, you have no problem. So I just, you know, using it, because I don't use it for making monies. So this is the real uh, structure of my satellites. And then, in, you know, the only thing that bothers me was, the only challenge was, these are the antennas, aerials in England, right? This is VHF, this is UHF antenna that you need to communicate, if you want to communicate with your satellite. And thing is, you cannot uh, have that uh, antenna deployed and then you, want, you cannot put that satellite into the adapter, you have to wrap it. And one way to do that is you use mostly measuring tape, fishing wire, nichrome wire, and wrap, wrap it around, and then you apply voltages to the I mean, nichrome wire, and it will uh, melt the fishing wires and cut, and then it will, uh, you know, deploy the antenna. And I didn't invent that either. This was also done by other satellites as well. But I built it. Na, two, set. Yeah, <laughs> it's working, right? So, and these are the the real satellite that I've been trying to uh, build for like two months because I don't have time. I only have two months to build and finish my satellite because I just got a I got a phone call from Russia that I mean France. Hey, your lunch date is. May, you have to bring your satellite to France now, and then, like, I only have two months. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, four months, but I spent two months for the permissions and all those kind of things, and then I only had two months to build the satellite. So this was, like, the final 
of my satellite. I know a lot about these techniques and all the schematics, how the satellite works. So if you want to talk about this uh, satellite, you come <coughs> after the talk, please. And yes, this is the final version of satellite. I could not bring it over here because it's in San Jose, uh, US, in an exhibition right now. So the hardest part of this satellite project was this is the key of the satellite project, I think. Nothing was hard. I mean, getting a permission, I mean, I think we can all do that. Making it, yes, it's not that hard. I mean, it's all internet. But to get a certain electric component that will be walking on the space environment, where you have lots of radiations, high temperature variations. Normally, people use aerospace grade compounds, but you cannot buy the compounds no matter no matter how much money you have, because it's in exploitation law and something called international traffic and in arms regulation in the U.S. Something called ITA, ITA. So you cannot buy it. People are worrying about like terrorists might using them. So I've been collecting. I've been collecting these kind of uh, electric components, commercial components that you can buy online, but has been into space and successfully operated into space. But that was, I mean, hardest part for me. So I read a lot of, a lot of like papers. I tried to, uh, you know, go to approach it to the people. Hey, what what kind of components do you use? But you know, well, who are you? I'm an artist, and then they just you know tell you what compass that they use. So I you know wrote it down, and then that became like a a starting point of another searching and the searching and searching. So it, it took me six years to get this you know database. Like you can see, uh, so operation. So I don't have time for my talk, but operating can also be done really easy with amateur radio. Like 200 US dollars, Yegi antenna, five dollars if you make one. Yes. And I just want to talk about uh, the formations. You need frequencies if you want to talk with the satellite. And uh, there, uh, if you want to build a satellite, uh, this is the first thing that you need to work on because it takes time. Law said two years before you launched the satellite, but I was lucky to get an exemption. And you also need to uh, register your uh, satellite. I got this register uh, letter, <laughs> registration letter from the Korean government. So, so I'll be the 16th object, as you can see, the 16th if my satellite is up on the air. Okay. And this is how I show uh, the people how the satellite will be working. As you can see, it's really like an amateur. And uh, I don't want to go through the functionalities. Because I think it's, this is you know an art project, so no one you know I think not many people are uh, thinking about functionalities, but I can talk about it later. But I just want to talk about this. I sell T-shirts to fund my project. That was my uh, first idea to have a cultural justification of the satellite project. Because I'm I was worried about you know as an individual, because this could be I thought you know a strategy to to. To, for the people who tried to stop the project. But no one stopped it. I never had any difficulties other than making money. But I couldn't make money out of selling t-shirts because even though I put like a card in there promoting that if you buy these t-shirts you can have one card who, which has like 12 unique digit numbers that you can use that number later when the satellite goes up and then satellite transmit the numbers 
if you win the lottery, then you can launch your own satellite. I keep, you know, telling people about this, but no one bought this T-shirt. Maybe the T-shirt is, you know, not good, or they don't want to have their satellite. <laughs> but I got, as you can see, 9,800 to go. Some people wear it. Yes. I even published a book. This will be the, my uh, future book. And I make documentaries, meeting lots of lots of people from uh, uh, the world who has like-minded uh, me. And yeah, that was my strategy. But I thought, you know, I probably not needed strategy. And as as I can said before, launching is fixed on next year, April. Uh, again, hopefully they don't uh, uh, push it back again, but as, as I paid most of it, so there's no turning back. This isn't a big project. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I think in the future if we can group launching it, I think we can definitely cut, I mean, reduce the cost. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we need to share some uh, frequencies. These are, the blue dots are the only frequencies as an amateur that you can use right now. So we have really, you know, little. And I really like to talk about the, uh, if you, you know, want to open, whatever you want to open, you have to be very kind. I think otherwise it's really, you know, not a good open source. You have to have, be very kind open source that you need to have really good tutorials or anything like that. One last thing. Uh, this is the learning curve <laughs> of the uh, artists versus the corporate engineers. I think that the reason why you know learning curve is like this is because artists does not have requirements. I think it's a good thing. I'm not a genius. I'm just a, you know nobody who who has a you know fury or the anger to to make something. I don't have obsession. A lot of people said, you know, hey, you, you obsessive, you like genius, and then I think you're an artist. But I don't even have an obsession. This is just like, you know, if you keep hearing about like people saying that, hey, you cannot do that, then you will start to be angry. And then I think that's a good motivation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. And then you can download all kinds of information, structure, SolidWorks, CAT file, schematics, eagle libraries, and everything from this website. And you can add me uh, through the uh, Facebook and as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have some questions for Hojan? OK, I'm going to stop here, and then I'll come over. Well, I, I do want to know what the satellite does. Yeah. Please. Oh, yes. So basically, it's communicating. Uh, uh, if you, uh, and, and also, there is a really strong flashlight, LED light, <laughs> that you will be able to see from the Earth. So you uh, make a reservation from the Earth, and then it sends signal to the satellite. In order to do that, you have to hold hands together. And then countdown goes down, and then it transmits certain and whatever message that you reserve to the satellite. Satellite will be blink in a Morse code pattern, so you will be able to understand what the satellite will be saying. It says, "Who are you?" Right? Yeah, that's it. And some communication, but basically, it's about gathering all the data about those, you know, commercial company for later open up. Yes? Who did you hit up? Sorry, there's a question over there. Uh, I, I was going to say, what do you talk to it about? But we um, found out that that's a good matter. Huh? I was going to say, what do you talk to it about? Like you said, you were talking to it like it was a thing, you like communicate, like you had a conversation with it. But you kind of explained that just so it's a thing. What, uh, what conversation? Like with the satellite when you communicate with it, but you said it like flipping lights or something. 
Oh, the frequencies of the communications? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, she was um, just asking about your conversation with the satellite. So you had one which was for you. Oh, you that you message, you, you mm -hmm. make your own messages. So you, you say, if you want to say I love you, then you can just, you know, say I love you. Or if you want to say some funny, you know, word, then you can, you know, just type through the computer and the computer will trans, I mean, transcode the messages so that uh, satellite can understand <coughs> and then satellite will be, you know, transmitting whatever you want to say. Yes. Um, I was just going to ask, <laughs> who did you write to for permission? I mean, that's... Uh, permissions. Yeah. Uh, one from your government about the space body registration, and one from your uh, for, from the uh, international telecommunication union about the frequencies. But your government will be responsible for handling those registrations. So two permissions, wow. and third one insurance. If you're lucky, you can get exempted. There's some countries that requires their insurance, but some countries does not. So three things. It seems remarkably <coughs> easy, like in terms of the government letting people put things. Yeah, in but uh, the, the filling out paper was not that easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 A lot of you know, attempts. Yes. And I yes. Uh, once once you you launch the satellite, what 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 would it be its lifespan? Uh, we expected uh, this kind of satellite, which will be orbiting around 600 kilometers to 2,000 kilometers. Uh, we expecting like around one year, but mostly like they've been work successfully working for six years, and they will burn and come to the Earth and die in, within 30 years. Okay. That's the only uh, uh, legal orbit that we can send right now. Out. Will there be a party? <laughs> yes. Uh, there's some uh, like five or six people will go into the Kazakhstan, Russia, the launching site, and I think we'll try to I don't know, I have some vodkas and sing together <laughs> with the rock and Gaza. But I will, you know, make a good video. So, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> There's been a lot of international attention, but what's what's the reaction in, in your home country? Oh, that's a good question. I think uh, I have a, uh, really different kinds of like feedbacks, like country by countries. Uh, I had a really really good feedback in uh, Buenos Aires, in Argentina, South America. I had a I had a gen generally I mean in general I had a really good feedback in Europe as well. But in U.S., you know, but in Korea, I mean, it's really, I mean, uh, <laughs> almost no feedbacks. <laughs> People are really busy. But when you're thinking about like launching a satellite, I think I think that probably will happen to you too. It's just like a, you know, uh, chewing a gum. When the seat is gone. That you will forget about, it. and it's about like one or two days. You will maybe you talk about this project with your friend, but I think after one or two days, you will start to talk more earthy things. <laughs> yes. Another question. Um, I was I'm also just interested because there's been a well, there feels to me, although this is kind of my area, that there's a little flurry of artist satellite projects at the moment, although yours is far and away the most handmade of them. And uh, I'm just wondering what you think the, the factors are in that, both technologically and, and, and maybe poetically. Um, I think a building a satellite these days is not that hard. I mean, it, once you understand the logic behind it, that's why you know, I just want to share that process. But there's some difficulties and limitations of this, you know, small satellite program, as you can see, because you cannot use that amateur frequencies to make money. You cannot send any signals to the to the other countries or anything like that. But I think it's generally, I mean, it's possible. So I, I, I kind of feel boring these days because I knew that this is already possible 
And if you have money, then you can definitely not show on your own. You know, about the poetic things? Yeah, yeah. What's the what, what's driving artists to get involved with satellites and the idea of launching things into orbit? <coughs> That's a really a big question. I, I recently had a conversation on that. I really do not know. I mean, I wish I can find. But maybe it's just like I think it's, that question has a lot to do with why we want to create something, maybe. Because we've been trying to create something a lot on Earth. Maybe a lot of people might think it's, you know, we try to create something to space. I don't know. I really wish I can, you know, know about that. But I. Uh, spending five years for this project, I, I you know, really think that it's, it made, made me think a lot. You know, spending money, you know, working on uh, one project for five years. And, uh, it made, made me think, why am I trying to put something into space all the time? It's really a big question. I think those questions maybe shouldn't be answered until I finish this project or maybe until I die. Maybe if I maybe you know find an answer maybe the project might not be as interesting as it is. So I try not to answer the questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.